You do look tired. I am tired. You look very tired. More tired than I've ever seen you. <sighs> Today we have with us Christian Militello of Militello Painting. Christian, welcome and thanks for being on the show. Could you just describe your business to us briefly? What's the company name? Where are you out of? What's the origin story? And what do you do? Sure. Militello Painting and Power Washing outside of Philadelphia. 22 years. We do painting and power washing. Primarily residential. Background. Yeah. My grandfather was a handyman and learned some stuff from him. Kind of took it all from there. 22 years. What was the pop culture? What was happening 22 years ago when you started your company? Well, skateboarding was not cool like it is now. Is it still cool? I like that peak a while when? ago. Tony Hawk did his... 1080. Avril oh, Lavigne man. was singing about skater boys. What was that? So what year was that? 2001? Did you just open up a calculator for that? I'm very tired. I have just had a baby. I don't know when this will get released. So it could be, but I've just had a baby and I'm very sleep deprived. 2021. 9-11. Twin Towers. Uh, was that 2020? Yeah. yeah. That was 2021. Survivor started. Uh, Shrek was released in 2001. Monsters Inc. Also 2001. PlayStation 2. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the same as it is now. Yeah, not much nope. has changed. Dale Earnhardt waist size. died. You, you missed that. Dad joke. My waist size. That's different. Okay. What Should were you, you doing 22 years ago? First of all, it doesn't seem like you're older than me, but I assume you're older than me. How old are you? 43. Because in 2001, is that, is that a, I was in high school. I don't know. How old are you? 35. What do you attribute your longevity to? Most painting companies guess, are not a lot around for 22 years. Very, very, very yeah. few painting companies last 22 years. Inexperience, right? So not even knowing that you're doing a good job or a bad job. Do you feel like that just keeps you hungry? Or how do you think that attributes to you? Yeah, yeah. not wanting yeah. to fail. Never wanting to fail. Always pushing through. But and in like think, some uh, good gut. Do you think others want to fail? So you're an outlier in your longevity. So I'm trying to poke at you and just find out what it is. Because when you say not wanting to fail, I feel like most companies want that. But what do you think that's unique about you that gives you this unique outcome? Outcome of staying around for 22 years. You know, I can't speak for what other people experience or don't experience, but learning yeah. from mistakes a lot quicker, recognizing the mistakes a lot quicker. It's like a humility finding, to change course. Yep. Yeah, finding good people where I've failed and what they're good at. So yeah. good people to accent yourself with. That's good. Is, is I it. think there's a lot of truth to a lot of people are hard headed. A lot of business entrepreneurs, there's a special class of entrepreneurs called people who start painting businesses because a lot of them are painters who are forced to start a painting company. They're not necessarily pure entrepreneurs. They wouldn't start a company in most realms of life, but the fact that there are no nice businesses to go work for, they're almost forced to start their own business. Not everyone has the humility that you have to do a course change. I was not employable and recognized that I did not want to be employable by anybody else. Is that humbleness or is that cockiness? I don't know. Right. Yeah. So like I recognized that like I didn't want to, I did not want to work for anyone else, nor could I, because I was so stubborn and hard headed. I'd be the worst employee ever. At least within yourself, willing to change when something's not working right yeah i mean not everybody's like that yeah sometimes the mistakes lasted years sometimes they lasted months so I, my biggest mistake is probably something i didn't do which would be writing things down didn't write down production rate i didn't write things down to know how to repeat them i didn't document a process i always tell people write things down you know write down how long it takes you to do something and the price you gave it that's probably my yeah. biggest mistake is not writing stuff down data is king why are there all these baseball things behind you i love baseball man i equivalent baseball to life there's fair and foul and it's clearly drawn is it it's there and now it's reviewable Right, you can you can run a playback, right? Review it to get it right. In between the lines, all good. Outside those lines is what no about good, signal? but you can what still about, be out. What about signal stealing or sign? What do they call it? Sign stealing. Love it, love it, love it. What about banging the trash bin when there's a fast? Oh ball? no, you get penalized for that. You can't do that. Yeah. Well, and then like years later, you might get plunked by a pitch from somebody because they weren't happy with that. Okay. Joe so in Kelly, theory, there's Joe there's Kelly, uh, 300 is a hall of fame number. You fail seven out of 10 times and you're a hall of famer. Batting average it, of a 300 is a good, is a good number. It's a good number, right? So, and in life and life, oftentimes we think that if we're not perfect. We're failures. But in reality, if you just can hit consistently one out of every three. Yeah. No, it's also the only sport where the defense has the ball. You need to react on offense <clears throat> based on the defense. Is that a reason you love it, or is that, or is that, a, or is that like? I'm comparing one? it to life. I like the yeah, first two. Okay, so the first one is there's fair and foul lines. Second one, 
you don't have to hit a hundred percent. You hit a th- yep. hit 300. You're good. And the third yeah. one was about, tell me about this one. The ball is on defense. Well, the ball is defense, right? So that can be life, right? Judging you uh, can be what society says. You got to react. You got to conform. You got to do whatever you need to do by what's thrown at you that you don't know what's going to come and you can't control and be yep. successful at it. So in major leagues, they get thousands of at-bats. Instead of going for three for 10, which is an average, you could go 0 for 40 for a stretch and then go 20 for 40 constantly another chance there's another day another game consistent chances to improve to work through issues to go practice to become better but you got to work with teammates everybody in a position base pairs are a certain distance apart home plates a certain distance apart if it was another foot it, ent- it changes in everything else entirely now. they increased uh, the base sizes didn't they they didn't did they just change uh, and that changed that changed the calculations of stealing second base and now all the records are going to be ruined jackie robinson's not going to be happy about that yeah but there's been so much that's changed over the years they put baseballs in humidors control how well they're going to be able to be hit or not the minnesota twins won the 1991 world series did you know about kirby that Puckett. kirby Puckett. The man. He did some things later in life that we won't talk about. I like the uh, the defense has the ball. You're not in control when it comes to life, right? You're not in control. You can't set their defensive structures. You don't even know how the ball is going to come at you. It's going to be something you can hit or can't hit, should swing. You know, you have to decide you're going to swing at it, not swing at it. You have to hit the right swing or whatever. You have to decide where you're going to try and hit it to. Those are the things you can control, but you can't just, you can't control what comes at you. You have to react you quick. Have to make decisions quick. So what's, you know, so you played, I played some college baseball, some peewee baseball. I was a catcher. Catchers make the best managers. But yes, they would throw the ball. I'd catch it. I'd call the sign so I know a pitch was coming. I'd look at the batter, see where he was at in the box, see if he was a little far away. You ever trash talk him? Uh, friends. Hey, your shoes, are, your shoes are dirty. Catch your look. What do you like, say? It's not like the Sandlot. Sometimes. I, I So believe it or not, sometimes I'd have a friend that would come up to bat and I'd tell him what pitch was coming. No. Just remember me when I come up to bat. Yeah. No. You were yeah. betting on yeah. your own games and throwing it. Wow. I, that's why I love baseball. That's why I love being a catcher is you get the, you get to be the manager on the field. You know, sometimes these pitchers are little or big babies. They give up they a are. home run. You got to go out there and tell them how great they are. And it's just one run. Pick yourself up. Why were you skateboarding? That seems dangerous. Did you ever fall down? Yeah, I've broken some bones, wrist, ankle. It was fun. Uh, you know, it kept me uh, skateboarding and snowboarding actually in between seasons kept me out of trouble. It was always being active. It's like skateboarding is what the hooligans See, do. That, that's what it was in the 90s. They thought it's not the same way now. Believe it or not, a I, bunch was, of I was riff rap. They're damaging public and private property with their tricks and their grinds on the ledges. And who has to pay for it? Taxpayers. Not the skaters because they're unemployed. They're, they're hoodlums. See? You're true? a hater. I'm not a hater. Yeah. I'm just trying to protect public and private property. And you skateboarders are running around cussing in your black clothes and slipknot. Is this true? I mean, sort of. I mean, yes, you go on private property and do your tricks on there. And yes, it can damage things. But back then, they didn't have as many skate parks as they did now. What's that? Do you have a favorite, do you have a favorite movie? My stock answer is The Lion King. Playtime by Jacques Tanti, the 1967 classic. That one and The Lion King would probably be my top two. I'll have to write that down. Very underappreciated at its time. It's like a playful poke at the bureaucracy required to run society. I think you would enjoy it. I don't think you'd enjoy it, actually. But The Lion King, I think you would enjoy. So Christian, you kind of, another reason you're pretty interesting is you were the first partner with all of Holdings. I was. You are and December, you were. December of 2021. Just yeah. back when we were just a paintbrush in a dream. Rocky. Rocky Balboa. Why did you partner with all of Holdings? I actually remember having conversations with you about this. Before it was even an idea in my head, I'd say, oh, yeah. Jason, what are you doing? What are you doing over there? Then I was like, well, what would it look like if... Right. And that's where the conversation started. The reason why I did it is for the people. And that sounds so cliche. I recognize good people. I surrounded myself with good people here in order for this company to grow. I've recognized my faults and added the people who are better at my faults than me at 50%. And that's what's that's what's gotten us through the past 22 years is people. I recognize that getting to the level of business I was at, I could continue to persevere by adding people, but I may lose them because it, the growth may not come quick enough. And they didn't deserve that anymore. When we were smaller, it was okay. Um, but as you become to get bigger and bigger dollars involved with production and gross sales and things like that, people deserve a little bit more and they deserve promises fulfilled. It was never a goal of mine as a business owner to promise something that somebody had an interview and have it not to come to fruition. I thought there was a possibility that partnering up uh, with Jason, you know, at the time, and then the other guys, as we got to know each other, could give the people that were here and the people that will be here the best opportunity to grow beyond what I was able to provide in a short period 
of time. It's not saying that I wasn't able to provide it. It's just saying that it's a lot faster. What have some of the wins been with taking on a, a cooperating partner? As you guys continue to grow your side, we've added some of those pieces to our side. So some of the biggest wins are guys like Dave, who's become a huge asset to our business and, and helping run run it here and keeping people accountable. Some of the things that I was not great at was what's keeping Dave's, people accountable. Not everybody knows what's Dave's role in your business. So Dave is an all of guy, but what does he do in the middle of painting? So Dave is our integrator. Dave helps keep everybody here from a super high level accountable, right? But it's not accountable to things Dave says. It's accountable to what they say. So Dave does that. And he's also responsible to make sure we stay on budget. What are some that's, other wins? It's a huge win. win? Um, predicting the future best as we can or better than we could before. We now understand the data and how to apply that data better than we did in the past. I think as you grow, especially if, as you're trying to do high growth or fast growth, having someone that can see around the corner or see through the fog is always helpful. And you were the first one where we said, hey, let's have another painting company adopt this software. What was that like being our first go? I don't think it would have been as rough if we didn't already have some systems and processes ourselves. It just was not repeatable because a lot of the processes were not in my head. I'm sorry, were in my head. The true power of an ERP is when every item of the system speaks to each other in real time with, with low amounts of friction. The value is in what happens afterwards. So you're early on in the journey. Are you happy you did it? You know, now where we're at now, I'm glad I did it. The people that work here, I, I always knew they'd succeed with a little more direction and that has shown true. Uh, and they've all succeeded beyond what I expected. You know, is, is this a commercial for Olive? This message is brought to you by Olive Holdings, olivefoldings.com. Realistically, you you were the first, the first, but what gave you the idea? Was it through some research or a video or some friends or some acquaintances? Like, how do you like, hmm, maybe I should do this? Everybody told me not to. I'll start there, except for my wife. I think everybody says that about partners. They're the worst. Well, first of all, it's very easy to be a naysayer. You sound a lot smarter when you tell somebody that their idea isn't good. And partnership in painting typically doesn't make a lot of sense because they usually don't make businesses partnering with somebody's lifestyle job. But if you're actually going to build a business, which is what Olaf is doing, Militello Painting, and what we did with Paris Painting, an actual business that can be passive, well, then it makes sense to take on partners. People are like, why would you take on a partner? You don't need a partner. I'm like, well, I don't need a partner for what I'm doing now or even a little more success, but I have pretty big dreams and I know exactly what I can do and what this business can do. And that's not going to happen on my shoulders, either because I can't do it or I don't want to do it. I think it was just always innate in my, I also didn't grow up in painting. I have an econ major from the University of Minnesota. Minnesota. And it's just, this is how businesses get built is through partnerships. No one's building a giant business off of like one person. That's very, very rare. You're either bringing in talent as you go through like stock options, or you have a group of founders at the beginning that are partners. Very rare story that one person will put up. I mean, there are, they are out there, but. So yeah. people have heard the whole econ thing and university and desk yeah. job, but when, when did it like pop in your head? I'm going to build a partnership. Like I'm sure it morphed over the years and we can bring on partners. We can sure. develop this, but like when it was like, boom, this is what I need to do to keep this going. I hadn't stopped growing. I was going fast, but I still saw there was so much potential out there that I wasn't capturing on my own. It was just so obvious to me. It's hard to even think through it because it's just so clear. I was like, yeah, why wouldn't I take on a partner? This is going to get way bigger pie. And the potential of it becoming stable is much more likely with somebody else. I'd say with maybe even some of your story, there was a leap of faith. I think this will work out, pretty confident it'll work out. There's enough uh, relational equity there or social proof there that I'm willing to go into this journey with you together. And we're both big boys. We can both have big boy conversations if things don't go well. The goal is for things to go really well. Oh, here's something that's interesting about you. You work with your wife. What's that like? So you know how most people, their husbands or wives both work nowadays. It's not like it was when, when you and I growing up, your family's still that way, but most families, it's two income family. And most of the time, those people have two different jobs. So when you come home at the end of the day, you talk about your day because it's what you talk about. When you work with your spouse, they don't want to hear about work because they went through that day with you. And that can be pro that can prove to be difficult sometimes. I totally could not have done this without my wife. And it's not just my wife, it's who she is as a person. It's the head she has on our shoulders, it's the brain she has. I could not have done this without her. She is more than the glue that holds us together. It's gonna be a good night in the Militello house when this video could <laughs> What do you talk about? So you talk about yeah. dreams and ambitions and goals and things like that. Yeah. And times where it's not great because you just want to have a normal relationship where you can talk about each other's days. And that's hard to do. So a lot of kids stuff. We do a lot of kids stuff, baseball and games. And we have a lot of parties in the summertime. It is it is a lot of work talk. I think just sometimes you got to turn it off. That's the hardest part. But we've built them together. That's pretty cool. I mean, what do you when you go home to your wife, do you talk about your work day or no? Not really. No. Never? Maybe not now. I'd say more so now. So you do a quarterly budget. 
or a family thing, right? Yeah, quarterly How? update, state of the state. Here's what's going on with all, all the with all the business dealings. Yeah, so just kind of, I'll do like a deep dive on each business unit, and here's what's up, just so she's aware, just more of an does awareness. She, does she like that, or she like? I think she, what she really likes is being informed. I think she does appreciate that she's informed in all the latest with everything that I'm up to. So I do that out of uh, our respect of that desire. How we many times a week? Lot, how many times a week do you think you guys make love on average? On average. On average. Oh, I, did I say? I don't know. You got to cut that out. I know you. I am a big fan of marital just, sex. Marital yeah, sex but it should not be talked. Marital sex okay. should be talked about. We should be talking about marital sex and how married couples have sex and it's beautiful. They should do it more often, quite frankly. I couldn't disagree not me. I, I know. We do. I mean, <laughs> I have to say, no, I'm like, oh, again. Well, you know those chances that you gave me earlier by all those compliments I was saying? Those, like, they probably just went down a little bit. Sex versus gender. What are your thoughts? Uh, some people would say that sex refers to someone's biological makeup. There are males, there are females, and then there's a very, very, very small percentage of the population that's in between. And we're just going to ignore that and let them suffer. Two sexes that are designated at birth. Then there are genders, and genders are the social constructs of how those sexes should behave. What are, what are your thoughts about that? I don't know if this should be talked about as a business owner and published. It's an interesting question because women behaving like men, that's interesting. But women vote, they drive. They play sports. And for a long time, all those things were very manlike behavior. Women also wear jeans. Some will even dress as a tomboy. I think the challenging of these norms of gender is a very common thing. What does it mean to be a man beyond the biological? And if some of these things weren't pushed, if the envelope wasn't pushed, would we even be where we at as a society today? It's a good question. It's a good conversation with Christian Militello. You got to cut this out all that. What are your thoughts on... Universal basic income. That's like communism, isn't it? What do you think we should do as technology continues to progress? Suddenly there's no work for humans to do because they're being done by the AI. All the, all the knowledge work is being done by computers and all the physical work is doing, being done by robots. Do you just want everybody to starve? What do, you, what do you want to happen to them? Well, I don't think that you will forever get rid of people doing things. So I think that whatever what do, the what do robots do? are doing, they're going to run the robots. I don't know if there's that many people needed to run robots though. So if you needed a paint robot, the amount of money that would take, right? A robot's not going to be cheap. I mean, yeah. what do you think a robot's going to cost to paint somebody's house? 500 grand? And guys uh, like you who have a no. job. There's not much incremental cost at all to operating the robots. No, you don't think there's going to be like a... I mean, most of this tech is, uh, there's a large upfront cost. It's kind of like the Amazon model. But once the, once the robot is built, once the software is written, the incremental cost to service each unit is pretty low. And so you win on a scale game. Can't we just give everybody money? All right. Just do so a, just, a UBI? I'll get, to your, I'll get to your answer, right? So let's just say, let's say, let's say a more realistic one is somebody taking orders at your table. And they have that now. You just hit that little thing at Red Robin and you put your order in and nobody ever needs to come over. So for the people who are who go out to dinner, who, who enjoy that conversation with their waiter or waitress, that will never go away. So no matter what, people will always want human interaction. I don't think people will want, people pay for that human reaction. It almost could become you charge more for people actually doing the work as opposed to a robot. So you want everyone to turn into the sex. Well, this has been- I don't a like these last two questions. What do you think about the war in Ukraine? Do you think Russia was provocated? Are they justified in their actions? What do you think about us putting weapons into Ukraine? Prior to I don't know enough Asia? about it to speak okay. about it. What do you think about the suffering of others? The benefit? You, I hear you. So you're now the chair of the nominating and recruiting committee at the Painting Contractors Association formed in 1884. What does that entail? Just finding good people to help push this industry along. So anyone who wants to help should contact Christian Militello, the chair of the nominating and recruiting committee. That's, what else did you do? I like to run. I have a family. I have a wife and five kids. Why don't what, so tell the people why don't you have a video game system? Because I'm very very passionate, and if I get a video game system, I will want to win it. I, I know my boundaries. I used to ha I used to play a lot of video games. After I had my second kid, I dismantled my gaming computer because I didn't have the discipline to not play video games at night. But I didn't want to play video games at night, and so I took structural discipline and I just dismantled the computer. So I didn't have to make that choice. Now other people may be so surprised at that because you seem so disciplined in everything else. I think people are disciplined differently in different areas. I don't think there's such thing as a 
disciplined person. Maybe there is. I don't know. People are disciplined in visible ways, but undisciplined in invisible ways. I have I have noticed that about myself. I'm very disciplined in some areas, but not very disciplined in other areas. So like carbs. Like carbs? Would you say carbs? Like carbohydrates? Carbohydrates. The most important part of nutrition when you're training is in eating enough calories. What's in the do you have any little things in those th boxes behind you? I do. I have lots of snacks. I have these right next to me right now. They're like 110 calories per chunk. I'll just pop them. Well, thanks, Christian, for coming on. I'm glad you had me, Jason. People come across everybody else's paths for a reason. Or I'm glad our paths have crossed. All right.